We have conceived what we call Dvorak project. First of all, to honor the composer, however beloved he is in this country and in the rest of the world, however well his music is known, it is still never too much. There's been quite an interesting uh, legacy from the composers who already worked and, and lived before Smetan and Borjak. But as far as the lasting value of music is concerned, it is Dvorak together with Smetana and eventually Janacek that have survived the test of time. And so we conceived this, this project that would take us three weeks to realize, consisting of Dvorak music, uh, which includes the three last symphony of his, which are the most beloved, the best known, the most mature ones. There is a reason, of course, for, for this for this feeling that everyone has for this music. Together with the three concertos, uh, violin concerto this week, cello concerto next week, and the piano concerto afterwards. And this uh, triptych of Toyn poems, uh, this week is uh, in the realm of nature, the next week it will be Othello, and the week after it will be the Carnival Overture. And then it will go to uh, South Korea, Japan, and later on in March, it will go to the main European cities on tour. It is also the coming year, 2024, will be the year of Czech music. Czech people celebrate Czech music every day, but the world somehow needs to be reminded and it has to be brought into the focus of the attention, because being a small country doesn't mean that it is not very important. In fact, it has colossal importance because what it brings to the world, it reminds the world of beauty, of power. It also reminds the world of history because this music is born in the country that has its history and the history is often painful. It's been dominated for a very long time by those who were bigger and stronger. For the first time, it acquired a true independence, was 1918. Dvorak didn't live to see that. Smetana didn't live to see it. Janacek did. But the aspiration, the dream, has always been there before it happened. And one hears it in the music. This is something else that the year of Czech music can bring to the world, this connection, this reminder that in a place that is not considered to be very big and very powerful, it can still be incredibly important and in that sense very influential because of the beauty that it can represent. And let's not forget that Dvorak was the man who conducted Czech Philharmonic when it came into existence. He was the first conductor. He, in a way, inaugurated the existence of this orchestra. And somewhere deeply inside our institution, it's in a way in the DNA. No one ever forgets that that man stood on the podium of the newly created orchestra that became known as the Czech Philharmonic. And if there is one composer on whom every colleague in the orchestra absolutely agrees and feels the same very deep love, it happens to be Dvorak.